for you to get to an amputated foot, you must have damaged nerves, which is a sugar problem. You must have poor circulation, which is a sugar problem. And then you have, must have a weakened immunity, which is a sugar problem. Those are the three things that will actually lead you to an, an amputation room. You will sleep on that amputation table because of those three things. One, nerve damage, diabetic nephropathy. No, neuropathy, neurons. Number two, blood flow, limited blood flow and circulation. That is atherosclerosis, sugar problems. Number three, weakened immunity because sugar holds on to the white blood cells and they are unable to get to where they're supposed to go in time. And that is low immunity. Therefore, infections come in and you cannot be able to fight the infections. And that's how you end up uh, getting a chopped off leg. Okay. There are these things uh, in... in, in uh, in diabetes that uh, students learn all the time, some, something called the intermittent uh, claudication. Intermittent claudication is where these people who have diabetes always suffer muscle cramps in their legs. Okay, you see somebody saying, I always have muscle cramps. Now, when you're having constant muscle cramps and you're not actively involved in activity or exercise, simply know you're either pre-diabetic or you're headed to diabetes. Also, these people who have uh, the legs, their legs are cracking. In my language, you call it a maca. <laughs> a very dry feet and then they start to crack. That's another symptom of diabetes. And you see, when you have that, one, you have a vitamin B12 deficiency, vitamin B7 deficiency, and you have diabetes. So imagine that can actually cause you infection. That can actually start the process of diabetic uh, wound uh, or ulcer in your legs. So people start asking me, how can I reverse that? And they use that stone to rub until, please, simply fix the diet. The skin will take care of itself. Okay? Yeah. So on intermittent claudication, that muscle cramp all the time, these are the symptoms that you experience and you start noticing that you're getting towards that problem. We, have, we call them the five P's of intermittent claudication. One is pain. So when you start having pain in the legs, this is the early symptom of you developing the diabetic foot. And number two, you end up having the pale skin. Number three, when you try to palpitate those legs, when you try to just hold this leg, they, they have no pulse. Number four, we call it paresthesia. Paresthesia basically means tingling, that needle-like piercing in your leg. When sometimes you get hot feet or cold feet or sometimes you just feel those tingling, those injections in your legs, simply know that that is the symptom of uh, diabetic uh, diabetes problems so you're getting to a problem and then the last one is paralysis by the time you're getting to paralysis that's the time we want to chop off your leg because now you cannot feel it now it's getting gangrenous and now it's becoming uh, dangerous to you so it has to be removed but as i say if you remove that leg have you fixed diabetes have you if i chop off your leg which is coming in as a complication of diabetes have i removed diabetes that is food for thought. Yeah. So if I want to remove the foot, the best way to remove or reverse the foot is to reverse diabetes. Because the foot came in as a complication. Please, if you understand that, that this is a complication of diabetes. Once you understand that, you're good to go. But before you understand that this is a complication, you might think that this is a condition on its own. So you're busy focused on treating that condition. You chop off the leg, you're using antibiotics, you're dressing the wound. You're failing to focus on what actually caused it, which is diabetes. And that is actually coming from the kitchen. And by the way, diabetes is reversible. I'm not telling you this to sell you hope. I'm telling you this because it's the truth. Diabetes is reversible. If you've been on diabetic medication for more, than a, for more than a year, the problem is you. If you've taken drugs for diabetes and you go back to the doctor and they add you a new drug and they now tell you you now have to start insulin therapy, the problem is you. Because by the time you're getting to diabetes, you've eaten yourself so well to fill the fat cells. And of course, when you're eating yourself so well, by the time you're eating yourself so well, we keep telling you this information, we keep reminding you this information. And what do you tell us? Ah, don't worry, I'm enjoying my money. One day we'll all die, okay? You might survive diabetes, but you'll be hit by a bullet. And I'm like, okay, amazing. Only that you didn't know diabetes is a bullet also. So, three types of diabetic foot. One is neuropathic. Anytime you hear the word neuro, simply know these are nerves. Neuropathic. The second one, ischemic. 
The third one, combine the two. Neuro ischemic. Is it so hard to understand that? That one, neuropathic, you destroy the nerves. Number two, ischemic. Ischemia means low oxygen. So there's no blood flow towards the leg, there's limited uh, oxygen, and therefore there's no oxygen flow towards the leg, and now the leg starts to die. That is ischemic, ischemia. And then now we have to combine the two, neuro for the nerves and ischemic for ischemia. So neuro ischemic. Is that hard to understand? Reverse the diabetes, reverse the food. Heart disease are actually part of this problem. I lost weight and my nerves recovered, felt my feet steps. Imagine that. It is that simple. Now listen, when you're fasting, there's something that is called the BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor. That is a protein that actually rejuvenates the brain and the nerves. So when you start fasting, you get benefits from this. You start rejuvenating your nerves and you start having the, the numbness disappearing. Again, you start clearing the inflammation in the blood vessels. So atherosclerosis disappears. And now blood flow towards the leg is improved. Imagine that. So not only will you gain from ischemia, you, you do away with it, you'll also gain from neuropathic. So you'll do away with the uh, aimless nerves, the nerves that are actually failing. So fasting is, is actually important in people who, are, who have diabetes. And I really wonder why people who have diabetes complain about fasting. I cannot fast because if I fast, I'll faint. But you're diabetic. What do you think diabetes is? Diabetes is high glucose, which is high energy in the system. So how will you faint uh, for not eating when you have so much sugar in your system that you need to clear? How will you faint? What will make you faint is your insulin therapy. That insulin injection is one that is going to take you into hypo. It's not about you fasting. Because when you fast, you will, you will clear the glucose in blood and the body will turn to fats to burn more glucose from the fat cells. So you will not die of fasting, not from fasting. But if you fast and then inject insulin. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, let me read through these uh, things that you can actually do when you're trying to prevent uh, the occurrence of diabetic food. Remember, people have diabetic feet and they don't even know it, okay? So by the time they are coming to... Uh, to, to, to seek therapy, it is very late. So this is what you do. One, inspect your legs every single night. Okay? Just do it. Be, be curious. If you have diabetes and you're on drugs for diabetes, start inspecting your legs. Just look at in between your feet. Look at the, the soles and all that. Okay? Yeah, you will notice that there's a wound, there's an ulcer here. You will notice it. And then, as you do that, people who have very dry legs and all that, simply... Soak your legs in warm water that has apple cider vinegar and then you dry with a dry towel. And then invest in quality socks. Most of you wear polyester. Is it polyester or polythene socks that, that accumulate all the, the, <laughs> the sweat and now your legs start having problems and infections. So invest in well, uh, very good cotton socks. And then do not wear shoes that are so fitting. You know these things. They are very minor things that you can do here and there as you fix the kitchen. Okay, so don't wear shoes that are so tight and all that that will just cause you the cones that will start the wound. And then lose weight, of course, lose weight. Join our weight loss programs, lose weight. Okay, but most importantly, grounding. Be very careful with grounding. When you have diabetes, be very careful with grounding because most of the times you might get a prick out there and you'll not even notice it because of the destruction of the nerves. So be very careful when you're doing the grounding. Okay, yeah. People have to unlearn. This is the fear that has been instilled in them by their beloved doctors. Yes, you see, nowadays people even, uh, uh, they personalize a doctor. You will see people saying, my gyna, my diabetologist. You personalize a doctor. The only thing you don't know is, he's not personalizing you. He's, pers he's actually personalizing your account. So you're actually uh, making him rich. As you think, my gyna, my gyna. Uh, somebody is asking, fasting plus metformin. Metformin is the only drug for diabetes that cannot take you into hypoglycemia. Okay, it's called a euglycemic agent. So it doesn't take you into hypo. That is the only drug that you can actually take uh, in, in, together with fasting. But our essence is to actually make sure that you don't have that prescription. Some of you, your blood sugars have already stabilized, but you're still taking drugs for diabetes. I wonder why. Same to people who have hypertension. You're still taking drugs for hypertension when your blood pressure stabilized long ago. And now you're going to hypotension and you start suffering the consequences, the confusion, the sweating, the nervousness, sometimes coma and fainting.
Will sugar effects be the same to a construction worker as to an office worker? Now listen, the body processes sugar the same way in everyone. If you've taken sugar cane, if you've taken popcorn, if you've taken ugali from potion mill or from wherever, you're working on a construction site, yes, people hide in the name that those people who are working on a construction site have high metabolic rate. But remember, if you have a functional thyroid, all of you have good metabolism. So anybody who is working on a construction site, I would actually prefer that you do just two meals a day. This nonsense of eating three, five meals a day just because you work on a Mjengo site is the reason why you're always having a flu. You have a lot of energy in your fat cells. Just burn it. Do not create excuses around it because, again, that money that you're earning from a construction site, will it be enough for therapy? If you think it will be enough for therapy, ask people who are going through dialysis. Just ask them. One session is about 10,000 and they do them three in a week. That is 30,000. Multiply that by four. That is 120,000. That is a salary of a civil servant. Somewhere in the larger office, 120,000 every single month just going for, for dialysis. If we fast, do we still take insulin? Why would you take insulin when you're fasting? Yet, the reason why you're fasting is to get to insulin sensitivity. The reason why you're taking insulin is because you're eating carbohydrates. You are insensitive to insulin and then you still go ahead and take insulin therapy. Why are you doing that yourself? Sometimes ask your doctor this question. Now, doctor, diabetes is insulin resistance. So I cannot tolerate insulin. So why are you giving me insulin therapy? Insulin therapy will make you more diabetic because it makes you more fat. It doesn't treat diabetes. It pumps sugar from blood into the already filled fat cells. Can pregnant women fast? Yes, fasting means not eating. It doesn't mean starving. So a pregnant woman, two meals a day are enough. Problem is, most pregnant women want to eat everything and then blame it on the baby. And then, three years after giving birth, they are still blaming on, on, on the baby fat. Three years after you've given birth, you're still saying, you're still telling us it's the baby fat. Three! <laughs> eh? Three? <laughs> you've given birth, the child is already three years. And you're still telling us, you know, this is baby fat. This is baby fat. At that moment in time, you're saying that in your hand, you're holding chips, the French fries. In this other hand, you're holding a broiler chicken. On your hand, you put the hormonal contraceptives. And telling us, you know, this is baby fat. This is baby fat. Baby, baby what? Which baby comes with fat? Let me tell you, medical schools are designed to actually condition you so that you can condition the entire masses. So you're actually a sample. Okay? You condition the masses. And then the big farmer is happy. And that's why you have guidelines. That's why you have WHO. That's why you have all these things that are actually sponsored by the big farmer. Hmm? So when you have that, there's no way out. Until you walk out and see the system from the other side, that's when you'll see what we actually see. And when you see these things and you start preaching them, everybody will come against you because they are in the dark. But I said it on Telegram, when they come after you are, because you're preaching health information, do not get upset. Because if you get upset, it means you still have the nature of evil. So what do you do? You forgive them. Once you forgive them, you pray that one day they get to see light. And when they see light, they will preach light. But if you get angry at somebody, just because they, they questioned you, just because they came after you or they attacked you, you are the problem. Nobody has the ability to control your feelings and your emotions. You have the ability to control your emotions. So stay calm. You know what you're doing, right? You understand the information better, right? So why are you getting angry? Forgive them and pray that one day they cross over and they get to see the light. Once they see the light, you are a good person. They will actually, they will actually regret why they never listened to you earlier. And that's how it works. So when you see all these issues that are coming up, this doctor is picking up this doctor, they are actually arguing, they, there's even a beef between doctors online. I'm like, hmm, hmm, which doctors are these? Evil doctors. Evil doctors. Those MOPC clinics, Kazi Nikuangusha Sugars, Nanomol Saline and Insulin, 10 units. <laughs> and then taking the patients to hypo and then resurrecting them again with dextrus. Agnes, you're very right. If you walk into the MOPC clinics in hospitals, what they do is you come in, you have hyperglycemia because you drank tea in the morning with the bread. And guess what they do? They give you an insulin shot. And then they observe you for about 30 minutes. Your sugars have gone down into hypo. And in that hypo, they start panicking. And guess what they do next? 
they either put some sweets in your mouth or some the glucose, the dextrose monohydrate, which is not even glucose, or they give you soda. You drink that soda, your sugars are going up. The next thing they are doing, they're injecting you another dose of insulin. So they're always playing a game with your system. And when you end up getting a diabetic foot, by the time they're chopping your leg, you're still on high doses of insulin. Ask yourself, how is it possible that I still got the complications of diabetes when I was taking drugs for diabetes? Don't you see that's nonsense? That if you're wise, common sense will dictate that if I'm taking medications to help me heal diabetes, then I'll never have to suffer the consequences or the complications of diabetes. So how is it possible that I'm here taking drugs, high doses of drugs for diabetes, but I still get the complication of diabetes, one of which is the diabetic foot. The other one is amp uh, the amputation, of course. The other one is dialysis, kidney failure, brain lo uh, memory loss. Why am I having all these complications when I'm still on high drugs, high dosages of drugs for diabetes? When you ask that, they start getting upset. And, and, uh, and the reason why I do this is because I always pray that you can actually see light from the same, same window that I'm seeing light. The same, same God who gives us these visions is the same, same God who can actually give you the same visions. Imagine you looking at the health window and seeing exactly things the way I see them. Is that not amazing? It is amazing. Imagine. And imagine all of you who are on these platforms right now. I, want, I really pity your doctors. I really pity your doctors because <laughs> look at it this way. These guys are going to have it rough. Just the same way the government is having it rough with the Gen Zs. These doctors are going to have it rough with people like you. People who have common sense. People who don't have emotions. Estrogen is low because they fast. People who don't have complications but they can come to hospital just to ask questions. They don't go to hospital for medication. They are coming to hospital to just consult. Yes, hello. Thank you, man. <laughs> to just consult. And you can easily challenge your doctor because you will tell them, I don't need seven minutes here. I need time to actually ask you questions. And please, before you write that prescription, answer me these questions. What is the problem with cholesterol? Before you give me that soda and then inject me with insulin, please tell me, why am I on high doses of diabetic medications, yet I'm suffering from the diabetic foot ulcer? Why? You have been my doctor for 10 years, right? Why am I still suffering from the same conditions when you know very well that you're putting me on different drugs that act the same way? And that's why sometimes you go deeper and show you how the drugs work, the mode of action of these drugs. Some of you who are in medical schools, you hated pharmacology. You really hated pharmacology, and now it's just dawning on you. Like, hey, now I can, I want to, I must understand the mode of actions. It is now dawning on you. And now, instead of lowering your ego to have a conversation with us, the only thing you can do is to keep on arguing, keep on seeking validation from people, hoping that one day you will feel right. You have a follower, yes, you have a good following, but you are empty in the head. Why? Because you put ego between you and your client. You put ego between you and your client, and your client is suffering because of your useless ego.